What's up? It's your boy Carcino, and I'm here to give y'all some context as to what is going down. Now, many of you have heard or seen that, wow, a lot of stuff went down. Like, man, it was biblical. Everything went a different way. When you saw Shannon Sharp and Skip Bayless have the woo on the show, which lasted only about 15 seconds or maybe 30 seconds, less than one minute of them debating. Shannon gets so mad he takes his glasses off. What have I told y'all? Shannon has been more mad on this show. Skip has been more mad on this show than what you just seen. They have blow-ups on the show. Now, the part where I told you Skip was wrong is when he started comparing Shannon Sharp's career to Tom Brady's career. And try to say, well, he had a better career than you, which is totally off the table for the argument. It doesn't prove Skip's point at all. It has nothing to do with the game itself. What does it matter? If Tom Brady is better than than Shannon Sharp, Shannon Sharp isn't jealous of Tom Brady's success when he's never really played with Tom Brady. Like his success, just you know, Shannon Sharp is a Hall of Famer who has three Super Bowl rings, not alone, you know, countless Pro Bowls, who revolutionized what the tight end position could be before Tony Gonzalez got there and started doing basically the same thing, an athletic tight end. Now, the situation um, got away from a lot of people, meaning that there were a lot of people who felt like this was sort of a detraction away from the you know, the direction that they wanted to go in. They wanted to get to a situation where there were a lot of people that wouldn't turn on certain people who wouldn't, you know, be in these quarrels then where it didn't go anywhere. Now, Undisputed is Skip Bayless's show that he shares with Shannon Shar, but it belongs to Skip. Skip got to choose who he wanted his dance partner to be. And it was amongst Jalen Rose. He could have taken Jalen Rose with him. Um, he tried to bring in, you know, Stephen A. Smith because they worked so well together. But he had another year in his contract. So that's the only reason Stephen A. Smith didn't leave. And he was in a great position now because with Skip gone, they have to give him a big deal to stay. They got to sweeten the pot. They can't let Stephen A. Smith go. If Skip Bayless leaves the network, Skip Bayless leaves the network to go over to to the Fox because the producer left as well, Jamie Horowitz. So with Jamie Horowitz left with him, and they went and did the show over on Fox, what was also brought to the equation was the fact that this show was going to rival the first take show they had on ESPN, which Jamie created. Then Jamie gets uh, caught into all this me Too moments, and then Jamie's removed from the show. Then the show started taking a new direction. But Shannon Sharp stood out because many people didn't know a lot about Shannon Sharp. I already knew what Shannon Sharp could do. I knew how Shannon is. He's a comedian. He's funny. He's off the hip. But Shannon Sharp clearly was the standout of the show. And he rivaled Skip in a way that Stephen A. Smith couldn't do. He wasn't a journalist. He's someone that actually played a professional sport. 
and at the highest level. So the things you'll be able to talk about with him, he knows. He knows a lot about basketball. He studies very hard like he did when he played football. You know, he craft his game. He wanted to make sure he was the very best at what he did. So he took notes. He wanted to be good at this. He knew it was a lot of pressure on him and everybody saying how he didn't deserve the job. So when he got it, he wanted to prove people wrong that he could do this. There was a lot of red tape against Shannon Sharp, even though he was proven innocent in a case where a woman basically lied on him, said that he groped her in the elevator when he never even touched his woman. And it's to this day, Shannon Sharp don't ride the elevators with women. He'll just jump off. He'd rather ride by himself on an elevator or with people he knows. So that stigma was on him, falsely. He was let go by the network, CBS. And now he's got this deal on Fox. I saw him when he guest uh, appeared on um, First Take with Skip. I saw the chemistry then. So when it was time for the three-year deal was up, Oh, he really blew up when Shannon Sharp started bringing out the cognac, the Uncle Shade with the cigarellos and all that. That took him to a whole new plateau on the Internet. Once he came up with Uncle Shannon and he had all his props he would bring out when the victory went by. This took him to a whole new category. I mean, trending on social media all current pop culture because now that's what it's about if you're not trending on the internet you didn't have a good show that's how it looks you got to be trending on the internet you got to get popping oh man it's going down so right now undisputed numbers are got a huge hike because people are tuning in to see if shannon sharp is gonna just lash out and skip now when they went through the contract negotiations, Fox lowballed Shannon Sharp. Knowing he was the energy of the show, he clearly was driving Undisputed more than Skip Bayless. Shannon was out, he was carrying the show. But Skip doesn't care because it's his show. Then they start doing testing where they bring four guys on the show. They used to bring guests on this show, and they used to have four guys on each corner. They would bring in Nick Wright, Chris Carter. They used to bring in Ray Lewis all the time on the show before him and Shannon Sharp fell out. But then they bring in Chris Carter, and they bringing in all these other people. Now, the reason they were bringing them in is because they were going to start a new show. But that wasn't the initial case. When they brought him in, they were bringing him in to find a replacement in case Shannon Sharp decides he wants to go to ESPN or anywhere else. They wanted to put a non-compete clause in his contract for at least one year if he did leave. They don't want him to leave and immediately go and get a show somewhere else. And they're willing to pay for that non-compete. To have him sitting down for a whole year before he goes and do his own thing. Now, I don't know if it's actually still there. Did he agree to it or anything else? That part, I don't know. What I do know is that they tried to offer Shannon Shaw's job with Skip Bayless to other people. 
Now it is rumored that Shannon Sharp was making three million, you know, annually, where Skip Bale is making six million annually at the time this was done. So if you look at the the complete picture and the whole numbers, what you're seeing is that all of these people who keeps claiming, oh, this is this is where it gets good. This is this is it. I'm telling you right now. Everything comes to an end at some point. Skip Bayless is going to have to get parity with Shannon Sharp financially because Shannon is going to require that in this negotiation. He, he's felt like he's earned it, but the studio, Fox, is going to have to make that decision. Now, Emmanuel Ocho. They tried to secretly negotiate a deal with him and Martellus Wiley to see which one of them would replace Shannon Shaw. But it's funny to me how the people that they interviewed to replace Shannon Shaw wasn't Nick Wright, it was Chris Carter. Emmanuel Ocho and Martellus Wiley to sit in that seat across Skip. If this Shannon Sharp deal didn't get done. Now, what is the denomination of those people? Black. So what they're saying is Skip cannot sit across from a white man and do his antics. That's what they're saying. We need to have the black element where Skip can go off on it. It's Skip's show. Shannon's the co-host, and he gets to go off on Shannon Sharp in a way nobody else can. And they make it a race issue. Race for your life, Charlie Brown. Now, from what I know and have seen and gathered the information over the past few years, I've seen a situation go from bad to good to God awful. Now, Shannon Sharp did something very smart for himself. He started this club Shay Shay, where he always used to talk about, oh man, we all serve hot ales on club Shay Shay. <laughs> he used to have that on the show. So he started his own YouTube page in which they do club Shay Shay. Because what you guys don't really know is that none, almost none of the guests really want to come on the show. They can't get guests on the show. This is where ESPN is killing them. ESPN would have a guest on the show consistently. Skip likes more of a debate. But a lot of professional athletes, a lot of former people, they don't want to be seen with Skip Bayless. Now, a lot of you might say, Skip Bayless is racist. I've known Skip to be a lot of things, but racist is not one. I think he just has, he's an elitist. But as far as race being the determining factor of his actions, I never saw that with him. What I saw from him was a whole deep 
infatuation with being right. He wants to be right so much, he doesn't even care how wrong it is he's saying. He will say anything to be right, to try to win, or make the illusion look like I'm winning. No, you're not. You're not winning, sir. Now, the whole slogan changes. Everybody's up in arms. It's a different situation now. It's no longer what you think it is or what you want it to be. It's different. Skip Bayless ran off Joy Taylor. Joy Taylor started off as the moderator. And she's like, man, she couldn't even post about it. She was so frustrated. She was like, sometimes it's just really stuffy in that room. And she posted that. And no one really knew what she meant. And if you watch the episode, you can see where it was going. Now, Joy Taylor is the sister of Jason Taylor. Jason don't really like Skip Bayless. <laughs> he tolerates him, but a lot of players that used to play in this league want to choke him. They feel he's overly condescending. He doesn't listen to any information that comes in, even if you have the evidence in front of him, he still wants to believe what he believes is happening. And that is the horrible way a journalist makes things known. They don't process any new information, even when it's factually proven that this is the new information, this is what happened. No. It'd be like, how are you telling me no? I'm telling you, me and him never got in a fight. Here's the guy saying he never got in a fight, and I'm telling you, I never got in a fight with him. Me and this guy never fought. No, that's not what I heard. It might not have been what you heard, but we didn't fight. <laughs> I'm telling you, I didn't fight anybody. He's telling you he didn't fight anybody. Why won't you believe it? Well, I'm just saying, something happened. Something had to happen. I'll be like, <laughs> so that's Skip. And when he goes down that road, it shuts down other people who are guests that want to come on the show. Um, you've had other players who were coming on trying to go into journalism, and they would start him out on Fox, and they'll try to put him on the show as a guest analyst just to see how it works out. So they're like testing to see will he get hired or will, won't he get hired. And they don't usually make it. A lot of them don't. Um, they had Nelly on there for a time before he got into some legal troubles. And they had to let him go. And a lot of different athletes have come on this show and complained and lost. Like the network back skip. So Joy leaves quietly to go work with uh, Chris, uh, Chris, uh, what's his name? Cowherd. So she went to work on the Cowherd show for all these years before she was just offered this, you know, expanded role. Now, While this took place, it was a different outlook that was starting to develop. And when I say a different outlook, I mean just the appearance of what it looked like on in everyone else's eyes. A different scope. You know? Jenny Tav comes in. She was better at the job than Joy. 
Joy treated this like a high school job at first before she realized how really seriously and a lot of work this really was and how massive that this job was. She started to get it. Um, but early on, she had some struggles. Skip kind of never likes his moderators to even speak like they're not even there. He doesn't like them interjecting, coming in with insight. You're just invisible until it's time to read the opening statements and the closing statements. That is it. Or say, we'll be back after this commercial break. That's all he thinks a moderator is supposed to do. You're not to be heard. Your point doesn't matter. You know, you're adding nitbits and, you know, we don't need that. <laughs> You know, it's Skip has got a order in how the show should go. So they're voiceless. He was like this on first take on ESPN, which drove Carrie Champion away because she got it from both sides. Stephen A and Skip, you know, it was just too much. So when she left there, and a lot of women who were moderators, definitely complained about the behavior and the attitude of Skip Bayless. Nothing was done about Skip. Jenny Taff, who's pregnant at the time, blows up because Skip continuously undermining her. And doing it on the show. where her and Shannon Sharp got along very well. She never got along with Skip that well. And when Skip attacked the coach's weight, she felt that was out of bounds. And just because a coach wasn't fit like Skip, you know, she felt like that was a horrible shot to say about someone just because of their weight, that they couldn't do the job, or it was just ridiculous. And she made a comment about it, and he came back, and she didn't back down. Now, Fox would never comment on it, and she was back, and they were doing the show, but it was tension, enormous Tension. A skip when they went off the air knew Jenny Tapp after her pregnancy would not be returning to the show. <laughs> she had to go. She wanted to leave. She wanted to go back and doing college football and be on the sidelines. She does not want to have to deal with Skip Bayless ever again. So this was a relief from her and people got to see it. So they started auditioning people to be her replacement. Alex Curry was coming in and it was looking like Alex Curry who, who uh, came over from baseball. Uh, Alex Curry was considered to be one of the high energy, spunky type of individuals. And I thought she was a perfect fit for the job, but I think she probably was convinced that, you know, just do a supporting thing. You don't want to, you don't want to be there. <laughs> um, she had her own little vibe. She had her bounce in the morning. You know, she, she was excited to be there. At least she gave you the feeling of excitement to do the job. And now, I guess she, when baseball season starts, she didn't uh, want the task. And I remember, I believe, Ebony Williams, uh, who I thought filled in really great when she was doing work for Fox and her time working there. Then I saw something of amazement when I was able to witness 
you know, the show kind of getting a moderator who's seemed like she's just sticking to the script. And I'm like, who is this moderator? You know, she's not bad, but she's she's just bland, you know. And it's, you know, it's not like you're getting a lot of pushback from her or a lot of involvement. She's just very bland. And it makes the show a little stale. The fact that Molly used to actually say something made first take actually kind of jail a little bit. Even though she would input something on the show, no matter how dumb it was, it was something people would talk about. She wasn't just eye candy. Now, let's get to the gist of everything. Skip Bayless. Uh, everyone's trying to say, oh, well, Skip is doing all these tactics because when is somebody going to step up to Skip? When are they going to do this to Skip? And Skip keep getting away with it. And all of these women who came out when Jenny Taff went off on Skip Bayless, the women were like combined. It was like, why nothing ever happened to Skip Bayless? That's what a lot of people were asking. Why it never happened to Skip Bayless? You know, they never bring that up. Normally, Skip would have to do a public apology or anything. He hadn't said, uh, said anything. But if it was Shannon Sharp, do you think Shannon Sharp would have to apologize or he'd be taken off the air for a couple of weeks? Not to mention, no one knows what Shannon Sharp's contract is. <laughs> so I'm telling you, but they post Skip Bayless's contract. You know why? Because Skip Bayless is a competitive human being. He was competing against Stephen A. Smith. So he wants to promote how much he's getting paid. And advertise that. Like, yeah, you're going to see me. You're going to see what I'm getting paid. He renewed his contract after Shannon's deal and everything else went through. Skip contract comes in. And he signs for $32 million over four years. Unbelievable. A four-year deal ranging over $30 million. A massive raise. Now, it is rumored to say that he's getting paid way more than Shannon Sharp is. Who's his co-host on the show. Now Skip gets paid more than Stephen A. Smith. And Stephen A. Smith has to do ESPN. He got to do... Um, First take, which is that show. He's got to do Sports Center. He's got to do radio. He's got to do about 55 jobs for the money that they're paying him. And he's like, oh, I'm so grateful, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Skip does what? Undisputed. That's it. That's all he worries about. You don't see Skip on nobody else's show. You don't see him sitting in a chair doing an interview. Skip does undisputed. And he goes home. Why can't Stephen A. Smith do that? See what I'm saying? Shannon Sharp don't have to do a sports show on Fox Sports 1. 
Shannon Sharp does Undisputed, and he can go home. Oh, ESPN, they make you do a little something extra, they feel you need to be doing for the money, even though nobody else has to. Now, with that being said, we move forward. Jalen Rose come out and starts bashing him now after this new situation hits. But Skip Bayless is competitive. He competes with Shannon Sharp on every turn. Like Shannon is a fitness guy. So is Skip. Shannon was showing pictures of his body all ripped up with the muscles popping out everywhere. He's just a walking muscle. Skip on the show. I got muscles. I work out too. I've been working out every day of my life. I ain't never been out of shape. Look at me. Ernestine took this. I didn't want to take it. He wants to compete with Shannon on every single thing. Now, of course, Fox told everybody basically, like, we're going to put together a podcast show for you guys. And it's all ran by Fox. That's way they can keep people on the airways and airlines 24-7. We don't close. Now, back to the guest situation. Like I told you, a lot of guests, they don't want to come on the show because they don't like Skip. A lot of them don't like Skip. But Fox want to have a lot of guests on the show. You know, they love a guest-oriented show, but Skip, like, I don't care. I don't need a guest to do my show. Because Skip is wanting to talk about these people while they're not in the room. So a lot of people say, man, I want to come on there. And they'd be like, I don't want to blow this guy's show up. And Shannon Sharp, they'd be like, I like Shannon. Because Shannon at least fair. You know, he's going to give me the... So they'll want to speak to Shannon, but they don't want to sit down with Skip. They don't respect him. Enough to want to sit down and give or do anything like that with him. Like, Magic Johnson is not going to sit down with Skip Bayless. You know, so then, now that they have Club Shay Shay, you see all the people, the plethora of people who have shown up to sit there next to him and have a conversation. This man has never played basketball really professionally, but they trust Shannon Sharp enough to sit down and talk basketball and X and O's. And all of these guests won't appear on Undisputed at all. But they'll go to this Fox radio show and sit down with Shannon Sharp because they like the way he interviews. They like Shannon Sharp. He's cool. But Skip Bayless, uh uh. I don't want to sit down with him. They used to have guests come on there. And even on the show, they wanted to hit Skip. So <laughs> he will still feel turned like he got to turn the. Tied to have the situation go in his favor. And they feel like at any given time, something could happen and somebody going to hurt Skip or try to hurt or try to swing on. Skip has received death threats. He's gotten all kind of hate mail and fans just, just wanted to just take Skip out. You know, it's just, <laughs> it is um, sad that people get so vested enough to want to risk their own personal life and their children's future and everything else to go and harm somebody. Now, his Skip Bayless podcast is it, barely doing anything because Skip doesn't want to do that. You know, that's just part of, hey, you know, we got to have a, a social media account. You know, Skip don't even want to do that. You know, he, he's from the, the whole other era. Now, I've seen a lot of things. And because I've seen a lot of things in this business, it's like a matter of right and wrong. 
and I saw this show be great, and I saw it at its height when they had great shows, and I've seen a lot of bad shows. And in the past year, this past year has been a lot of bad programming, like just bad shows. They might not have viewed it as bad, but I've watched Undisputed since the very first day of the air. I've never missed an episode. And it's bad. A lot of it is bad now. A lot of it's forced material. Some of the shows are good or they, yeah. But even that show, you know, I think it's a little burnt out, maybe. Guys need a vacation. But the shows haven't really been that great. I don't know if they're preoccupied or they burnt out from doing podcasts or whatever. And then by the time they get to the show, they don't really have that no more. What they had about, I'll say, two years ago. When the show was really cooking. And it was at a height it needed to be at. Skip is competitive, man. He's going to fight on every single thing. He's His problem is, this is his show. And he don't want to be outshined by anybody on the show. Naturally, right? Any Nobody would want to be outshined by anybody. Correct? We all agree that, but... To the level he goes to, to try to protect that or say that's what if the situation is right now or that's how we like standing. <coughs> it's a it's a catch twenty two because look you got a counterpart you know how many people who got to carry their own show. Because their counterpart can't carry their weight. Shannon Sharp more than carries his weight. He carries the weight of the show. Most of the people tune in to hear what Shannon's going to say. They only want to hear what Skip got to say when his team loses. But a lot of people, for the whole rest of the other segments of the show, they're listening to Shannon Sharp. The popularity issue came from Shannon Sharp. All his sayings. Man, my grandfather, you tell me, boy, you get a nail in your toe, boy, you better, woo, that mean you're doing something. Boy, I tell you, boy, if a pig had a square butt, he would poop blocks. <laughs> yeah, my grandfather, you see. So he used to have these Shannon-isms and all of that. Oh, they marketed Shannon Sharp, not Skip Bayless. Even though Skip Bellis is getting paid the most, they marketed Shannon Shaw. Now, at the end of Shannon's contract, which is going to come up with, with renegotiations soon, Shannon could leave Undisputed and get his own show. His contract is not for Undisputed. His contract is for Fox Sports. So he can leave Undisputed at any time. He could say, I don't want to do Undisputed anymore. I want to do another show. He could talk to Fox. They could find a replacement. He could stay there until they get a replacement. And he can go to another show on Fox. It does not hurt his contract at one bit. But by that being their flagship show, Fox, you know, don't want to risk ruining it. So they might have to really evaluate how they were going to do it. Like with Emmanuel Ocho and everyone else gunning for that role but I could see Shannon Sharp is growing tired seems like of doing this rendition and Skip might need fresh blood but the problem is they can't find another person who could put up with Skip or who could dance with Skip so you know we'll see what happens um uh, so far, I haven't seen the one guy that they had, this, like, twerp. He's too much of a twerp. He's not even likable. Like, nobody, like, his test scores, like, when Shannon and him go on vacation, they bring this guy on, and I swear to God, you want to choke him. He's, like, the worst. He's the worst guy I've probably ever seen do this thing. He's not a likable character, likable face, nothing. He's just somebody you want to punch. As soon as he comes on the screen and start talking. 
So it's that Skip's job. So for him, <laughs> how he gonna be opposite of Skip? You can't have two Skips. But yeah, there's been talk of Shannon Sharp not leaving Fox Sports. Um, doing some type of other show on Fox where they actually interview people like celebrities like he's doing on Club Shay Shay. Uh, Fox owned that. They might start streaming Club Shay Shay on Fox Sports where they get a television deal and start streaming that show because it's actually uh, a very informative and I think it's one. It's better than a lot of the programming they got now on uh, Fox Sports. So even though we went a little late, I want to tell everybody who's still been wishing me happy birthday days after my birthday is over. It still don't matter because look, it's my birthday no matter what. It's a national holiday. Yes, sir. Okay, let me go to some of y'all uh, cash out questions. Let's see what we got here. That's a Patreon. Uh, that is true, but that's on Patreon, sir. And uh, I can't really say that here. But yes, he is out here sabotaging NBA franchises and when actually running one. That is correct. No wonder the game is gone soft. He turns it into. Yes, that is absolutely correct, sir. And that actually is on the Patreon. Has something to do with the Ice Cube calling out Adam, Sel uh, Adam Silver. Uh, let me go to the other questions. I think I went through a lot yesterday, so I don't have a lot of them on here. So let's go through and see how many we got. You got to talk about John Starks and how he was talking about Michael Jordan's trash talking. Um, John Starks, um, yeah, I mean, shoot, anybody can tell you about Jordan's trash talk. That's what he do all the time. You know, nothing, nothing new to that. Jordan talked mega trash on the court. And John just would talk just as much as he do. John get to the point where he want to hit somebody. You ever, uh, contact Corey Holcomb and talked about working i will let us see okay uh, i got cut off but i'm thinking he's saying he'll love to see me on the show uh 5150 show i really wasn't watching it at first and i watched some episodes a lot of them are cool a lot of them are very cool you know but um it is what it is you know um some of the stuff is a you know just a reach but a lot of it is it's hilarious, man. Corey Ogham is Corey Ogham. So, you know, did Dave Chappelle steal this comedian's jokes? Can you please talk about that? Um, I don't think he did. A lot of the jokes uh, are similar, but the origin of them, the original root of the jokes... Uh, some of them Chappelle has told before that guy. Like when you see something in a special, you think that's when it aired. You know, like, this is when it happened. Dave Chappelle has been telling this joke and probably a lot of these jokes in different smaller places and settings, testing the material. 
And then the joke modifies and grows. So he already was telling that joke. It's possible the other guy probably picked it up from him. I mean, a lot of the stuff they're saying is not really complicated. Is the media trying to target all of these Hollywood, um, black Hollywood? Okay. Are they trying to target black Hollywood, the media? Um, we, we're always the subject. Um, you know, we're always the subject of that. Uh, no, I, I see this a little. No, that's different. Uh, that's more of a praise than a question. I think Stephen A. changed his stance when the black community turned up. Okay. Okay, that's your question. I see, I see how it is. Um, this person asked me about Jay-Z 22-2s. <laughs> Thank y'all again for my Cash App donation. Love, peace, and respect to all of y'all. Um, 22-2s by Jay-Z? Absolutely. It was epic. And then your thing about Stephen A. changing his stance. Um... He changed his stance, of course. He wanted to change his stance once he realized what he was doing was getting negative attention outside of just us. You see what I'm saying? Us. That was that was the the leading factor in the situation. Like that was a drawback, a major drawback. Because um, he's not thinking about us. He's thinking about people, his peers, when they're looking at him weird. Uh, Saint, Saint and Sinner. Oh, Saint and Sinner. Um, somebody just sent me that on the Patreon, actually, about this guy with academics going after him or something, or he's going after academics. Uh, that's it. I think we caught up. Yeah, it wasn't a lot this time. So, want to get your questions in? Definitely hit up the Cash App. It's your boy Carcino. I'm out. How you like that little, uh, How you like that little um, lightning intro? <laughs> hey, I love it. That was cool to do. If that dog on Orange Juice Jones do that terrible editing, I can do my own terrible editing. <laughs>